All right. Can everybody hear me? I hope you can. Uh, I can hear myself. Yeah. Haskell is the best, right? You got the type system. You got the laziness. And uh, you've got everything you need, essentially. So, welcome to Advent of Code. Again, I did this last year, and uh, I thought it was a lot of fun. So, uh, I'm doing it again. And I hope you enjoyed. So, a little bit about me. I am doing my PhD in programming languages at Chalmers in Sweden. Um, and it's mostly because I like Haskell. And then, you know, if you're doing a PhD, you can just do a lot of Haskell if you want to. But all right, uh, let's get to it. So I think this stream will be not too long, right? Because the first day is usually pretty easy. Um, but yeah, we'll see. And also, like, let me know if the you know Christmas music is too loud or or anything really. All right. So let's look at today's problem. This is the Advent of Code website, and we're opening it up. All right, I wonder what we're gonna get. So last year we had like a, yeah, thanks. Oh, I have my Hindi thing on. Let me actually disallow it. Okay, it's nice. It like switches words out, so you can learn a language if you want, um, like and learn vocabulary, right? Otherwise, you just learn a bunch of words about cows but then you oh wow thanks for the follow man all right uh... wow okay let's go so day one sonar sweep you're minding your own business on a ship at sea when the overboard alarm goes off you rush to see if you can help apparently one of the elves tripped and accidentally sent off the sleigh keys flying one sent the sleigh keys flying into the ocean okay before you know it, you're inside a submarine. The elves keep ready for situ. Why? Why would they have a si submarine for these? I mean, does it happen often? I don't know. It's covered in Christmas lights because, of course, it is, and it even has an experimental antenna that you should be able to track the keys if you can boost the signal strength high enough. There's a little meter that indicates the antenna signal strength by displaying zero to fifty stars. Ooh, okay. So I guess we're like. All the challenges this year will be about boosting this signal. All right, we gotta get all 50 stars by December 25th. Christmas. Okay, we solve puzzles. Yes, two puzzles available each day. Yeah, and each puzzle gives one star. Makes sense. Okay, as the submarine drops below the surface of the ocean. It automatically performs a sonar sweep of the nearby sea floor. On a small screen, the sonar sweep report, your puzzle input, appears. Each line is read as a measurement of the sea floor depth. The sea floor depth. As the sweep looks further and further away from the submarine. Okay, for example, suppose you had the following report. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to say this as example. Okay, and then we just say example, and we paste, and we got our example. Okay, this report indicates that the scanning out from submarine, the sonars we found depths of 199200. Okay, the first order of business is to figure out how quickly the depth increases, just so you can know what you're dealing with. You never know if your keys will get carried into deeper water by an ocean current or fish or something. Okay. To do this, count the number of times a depth measurement increases from the previous measurement. There is no measurement before the first measurement. Okay, so there are seven measurements that are larger than the previous measurements. Okay, how many measurements are larger than the previous measurement? Okay, so 
Well, seems good. So we're just... So we're finding... I think this is like a subsequences problem, right? There's like the super efficient algorithms for this. But, you know, we're not going to... We're not going to do that too much. Okay, so let's just see what we can do here. Okay, let's... Slow. Uh, we have the example input. And... Uh, let's make this a bit like this. You can see my messy desktop. Well, it's not that like... Okay. Um, let's see, day one. So, uh, and example is going to be a list of ints example equals okay so i think we can do read file right let me see i never remember like any api i always have to look it up uh yeah so read file takes in a file path and gives us an io string so we're gonna read in example Okay, and then we are going to turn it into a list of... Yeah, okay, so we read the file, then we do... Uh, I think online is not lines, right? Yeah. So we could do get lines, and that gives us like all the lines in the file. And then we are going to map read at int over the lines i like this right so so we need to actually add a type applications here i think maybe which uh, type applications i think we have like um i think type applications are in gc 2021 so i think that's like the version of haskell we're using like the compiler is 8.10 i might switch to 9 uh yeah but I, I don't have it now but i think that one works okay so far and i think like in that one you have this gat 2021 extension that is just a collection of kind of extensions that everyone uses all the time and you know it works out so we'll probably end up using that but in the meantime i think we will do like this so now we do load day one a read file is applied to too many arguments oh yeah we did the dots okay let's just get so uh, get let's just write read input right it picks in file name file path and it returns a list of ints io here read input equals and then we take all these and we paste it so as kind of this thing grows we will uh we need like more sophisticated parsers eventually yeah yeah i mean this is how you do it right you read it map yeah that's exactly how you do these things right uh, so this is going to be read input example. Let's see, let's reload. Uh, right, so this is going to be an IO input. And it doesn't like yes, because we have to F map. This is, this is how I program, right? It's all a... Uh, it's all a conversation with the compiler, right? You instead of like trying to get it right uh, right away, you just uh, yeah. Wait a minute. So, could much type IO string with char? Okay, what is the type of uh, lines over read file? Uh. Read file that gives us a string, right? And then, or maybe, what is going on here? So this is fmap, right? And that should give us 
we, we should be able to say, you know, something. F mapped over read file. What? What am I missing here? F map. All oh, right. X. X. I forgot the file. Makes sense. Okay, now it works. And example is a list of numbers. Okay. I think I know what we do here. So there's a function called group by group t group isn't it called group import data dot list group by which takes in a function and it kind of goes over the list and it groups them so what I want to do is I want to do group by less than or equal to to group the ints. Okay, so we're going to do this and then we're going to say this over the example. Hmm. What is it going? Right. And so here it's like, yeah, I guess we have to group by less than bigger. Than it doesn't really say what happens if it's the same. Uh, but okay, so we have the first measurement, and then yeah, and then it increases, and then it increases. But then these in these tree, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the part where because it doesn't, uh, it doesn't like. link dot group by so it doesn't actually because it it kind of groups by the uh, the first one right and then it doesn't stop until it yeah yeah okay let's just let's just write it you know we, it was probably a nice kind of group by thing we could do here but i think it's just easier to just write the function that says count ink which takes in a list of ints and returns an int. Count ink is equal to count ink prime of zero. Where? Uh, count ink prime. So this is like the classic recursive programming, right? You kind of you write the function that is your base case and then you invoke it with the base case but like yeah so now we have our initial value so we're def we're, we're kind of just defining a fold in the sense of yeah so now we're, we're just kind of defining like how are you going to start right uh and then like we know what, what we want to do when we start so we so we want to start with this zero, right? So this is going to be an int to a list of ints to an int. Yeah, like a recursion scheme. Yeah, so recursion schemes are kind of uh, a way to tell like how you want to consume the structure, right? Like how are you going to recur? Um, is this, is this a recursion scheme? Is that what it's? I don't know. I, I, I always think about like very complex recursion schemes. I didn't, but yeah. I, I want to learn more about what you meant. Okay. So we have the cur. Okay. And if we have the empty list, we just return the cur. We'll go return the cur. So essentially, right, uh, if we're going to count the number of increases and we reach the end, we were done, right? So we return the current one. Okay. Ah, uh, yes. Right. 
So here we're actually going to say first and then rest. And we're going to say zero and then first and then rest. And we're going to say uh, uh, last L, right? And we don't actually care about it in this case. So count. So what are we trying to do here, right? We're going to do curve and we have the kind of the first element. And this is a trick, right? That's why they say uh, here, right? No previous measurement. Okay. So we can actually call this rev mes. Okay. And then if we have cur mes and then rest equals, we actually do a card, right? So if the previous measurement is smaller than the I'm just going to say that less than or equals is it, it can be now we're counting the increases, right? So if it stays the same, that's not an increase. So the previous measurement is smaller than the current measurement. Then we want to recurse, but we want to. Okay, we actually we can actually join these cases. Uh, this is going to be count inc cur prime cur mes rest where cur prime equals so cur prime is if prev mes is less than cur mes equals cur plus one cur prime otherwise equals cur I think I think you can do this with cards. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I did that last year. Okay, yeah, no, okay. This is not. Uh, this is not okay. I think we need to do like this, and we say otherwise equals curve. And it doesn't like it because we gave it a type, and then we change it, and then. That wasn't good. Hello, uh, Lucky Urn Wolf. Sorry, I have to zoom in my chat a bit. It's on my like, so I have like a. I have like a teleprompter, right? So I can look at chat when I'm looking at chat. So I'm looking into the camera when I'm talking to you. Uh, but it's like a tiny screen, right? I, it's not. It's cheap, so I have to. And it's also like it's in dark, dark mode, so and I can't put it into non-dark mode. Yeah, 2020, uh, they it's like a uh, necessity drives innovation, right? Like if you want to, yeah. I just I just went kind of all in into my video setup, right? So it's so nice. And if you're on Zoom, you can just look people in the eye while you're talking to them. Problem is that like they don't have a teleprompter, so they're not looking back. They're looking, you know, they're always talking to you, looking somewhere else. But I can look into your eye. So everyone likes the chat. Okay, let's say run our count ink over the example. Seven. Yes. No, because uh, I was made fun of last advent of code, right? Because I was always looking over here to talk to chat and then yeah that wasn't popular apparently so now i can look into at you when i'm chat talking to you uh, and now i'm looking at the code looking into you it all works out all right we got the right answer for the example so we are going to get our puzzle input Control A, Control C. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I am coding the first advent of code problem. So there's like a collection of 25 problems and there's a new one every day until uh, December 25th. And uh, I'm going to be doing them every day. I mean, not every day, because like, yeah, like Friday, mom's like, coming to visit so I have to go away then uh, and then you know I'll be traveling back home for Christmas so 
but then I'll do it like the day after I'll do a double feature or something like that so all right now we have the input and uh, let's uh, just run it uh, we're gonna go count ink over read input input 1527 see this is also nice about yeah so most things exactly uh, yeah unless i have a good reason not but uh yeah that's, that's what's nice about this like you just stream a bunch um for a couple of days or like for like a month and then and then so i last year I, I tried to do something else but i don't know it's uh it's more fun like with a christmas mood you play christmas music it's all happening by the way I want to ask you, is the Christmas music too loud or no? Because I because I I can tune it. Just let me know if you if you don't like the audio. Um Yeah, okay, see? Now we 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 ran it and it was So this is what I I tried to do is that I tried to not over optimize, right? Until it actually yeah, because it's pretty fast, at least in the beginning. Like, if you don't, if, if you like approach it in a sensible way, it's usually not too bad. So, uh, but then, I mean, yeah, at like day 15 or like, or maybe earlier, like day 11, like then you really have to think about like, how can I optimize this so that it runs very fast? But now it's, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, if it runs instantaneously, like, there's no, I mean, there's a lot of competition with Advent of Code, actually, where, you know, the the Rust people, they're always like, oh, I finished in two microseconds. And you're like, oh, well, it took me shorter time to write. All right. Well, that was a clip. Okay. Let's see. 1527. Yes. Also, what's the Advent of Code? So, yeah. So you go to adventofcode.com and it's like this Christmas calendar that... Uh, Every day until the 25th, so until Christmas, uh, they publish a new programming challenge. And like the first few days are quite nice. Like, you know, it's just a, something you might get on a like computer science 101 exam. But then it really, you know, they really pump up the difficulty. Like, especially like around day 10, it gets, it, it can get very hard, right? So... Uh, but it's it's fun right and then yeah and then you really have to like go into especially in haskell right you have to really pump out the uh, performance all right considering every single measurement isn't as useful as you expected there's just too much noise in the data instead consider sums of a three measurement sliding window again okay Yeah, exactly. So I'm. Not, this is the first programming. Oh, thanks. I'm guessing that's uh, Stainfield. He's a he's a friend of mine. He's cool. Okay. Let's see. Uh, right. So. E. Oh, okay. The sum of measurement is is larger than the sum. The first this first comparison. Okay. So. Okay, so we just okay. We just slide the window. Okay, uh, let's do that then. So count ink. Okay, this is let's mark it. First one. So count ink. Second one. Easy. Count ink. Uh, two. Now we're gonna get to do something. It's uh, it's just coffee stains in a moving cup. Uh, so lucky this is a uh, this is just VS Code. It's actually it's quite nice. I'm using like the colorblind color scheme from GitHub. Um, it's quite nice. Yeah, you just it just works. 
Okay, so uh, now we're gonna have a three dice, three sliding window thing, right? So instead of just looking at the one, we just say A, B, and C, and then the rest. Okay, and then we count the increases. Um, no, so that's actually throwing an exception here because, like, you, you can assume a list is not empty, but I'm assuming it has three elements. That's a bit much, right? Count ink, otherwise, exception. Too few elements. Now, uh, A, B, C, rest. Okay, um, yes. So this is gonna be counts ink. Um, this is actually gonna be A plus B plus C. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna, uh, and then we actually gonna throw it. Yeah, I like it. I it's a, it feels. Uh, it's just easier to see, right? That's what it's. That's why it's like for color blinds, because it is just the colors are farther away from each other. So it, you know, even if you're not color blind, it's not. It's better. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is that we're gonna say A plus B plus C, and then the rest, and the B and C of the rest, right? Um, and then what we are going to do is we are going to say okay so this is the prev sum okay um, and we're gonna return it in case in this case if it's if we're done we're gonna return it um, So I think we should pass in A here as well. Okay, so just call that first. Now let's say another int here. Uh, so what we're gonna do is that we have like the current sum, right? And then we 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 add the next value, and then we uh, and then we kind of yeah. So we kind of. Add the next value and then we we remove the the a right so then we only have to keep track of one value at a time so this is going to be the next and the rest okay and what's the recursion here i believe the curve prime is fine but the uh the new sum let's just define it right that yeah yeah i mean coding is also like it's it's mostly about practice right so i mean you learn computer science and that makes you you get like a gut feeling for what's good uh, or like what's a nice approach right like what's going to be complex and not but it's mostly just about you know you play around you you program and then you get some experience um and uh yeah that's uh that's kind of all you yeah and then the more practice you get the kind of quicker you get but of course like now i'm not trying to speed code this i'm just i'm i like talking about it as well um that's what i like about the stream right yeah all right lucky what's your question so is equal to a first round some plus next minus first like this okay uh, <laughs> yeah you can pat a match against anything janetin uh, <laughs> but it's i guess it's 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 a bit much right because you can't assume that a list is not empty that's like reasonable but assuming it has three elements that's uh that's risky stuff. Okay, so uh, with the next sum is going to be so now we have a oh yeah 
So now we gotta kind of we gotta kind of kind of pass the B here. Ah, let's uh, let's pass all of them. A B C. Uh, cur. Uh, this is gonna be A B C. Grab some. Uh. Data dot list at least three list yeah yeah that would be good. All right, let me see what did a. Uh... Let me see how did he get the start package thingy to start because I watch when I watch videos I don't know how to get the pre-made starting thingy. Uh... I don't quite know what you mean. Can you rephrase it? Just just so I can get another understanding of it. I just finished day one in C sharp and bigger than and bigger than equal. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, when I start the code, uh, yeah, that is exactly what you want. Um, uh, we don't actually need the sum here because we have the element. Let's just sum them up again. Dun, dun. Um, let's say this is D. Okay, now this is going to be. So, cur prime is just a check. Is A plus. A plus B plus C less than B plus C plus D. And then we increase and then we say uh, the new list is going to be B, C, D. I think this works. A. Uh, so when you start, no, uh, uh, lucky, we want to, we want to figure it out. So, so. Yeah, so to start this, uh, exactly. So uh, one trick you can do in a, in a VS Code is that you have these dev containers. And so, yeah, after I, after I've done with this, I'll show you how you can uh, you can add a directory that's like called dev containers and then in that you have something called dot dev con dev container dot json and then uh, you can kind of load up an entire environment into uh vs code um which is like pre-installed and everything which is pretty nice okay let's uh let's see if this actually does something uh ec well, there is supposed to be an exception function right any reason why you aren't streaming in software and game dev a well yeah so th there's no generic programming right i'm not i'm not really developing software Okay, I guess that was that would that would be a better category. I'll change it. I will change it. I don't think it assisted uh, software and game development. Okay, yeah, I guess maybe people have uh, coalesced around that now for adding the code. Yes, so I've changed it. It'll be correct next time. Okay, let's see. Does this? Okay. Oh yeah, no, it's error. Sorry. Error. Uh, uh, uh. Okay. Yeah, no, I added too many types. This is a list of hints, actually. No, let's do it up. This is what happens when you... Yeah, now I, I I think it's correct now. Okay, it's a good point. We have to categorize things. If 
the categorical imperative. Okay. Now, let's check if count inc works on our example. We get seven again. Is that correct? I don't think it is, right? No, there's supposed to be five. Let's actually see what goes on. Uh, import debug.trace. Now, let's just look at our... Uh, let's look at the uh, running sums. Okay, so this is our s hat and then we do trace show s dollar this is a nice trick you can use in haskell where you where you kind of uh you just kind of it's it's, it's the haskell way of printing f but like you can't have a side effect but trace show uh what trace show does is that it whenever it's evaluated it prints this first argument right and it's a, it's a debug print of uh, of Haskell. Okay, counting two of example. So 199, 200, 208. 200, 208, 200. Yeah, there's something going on here, right? Uh, 209, 109. So where did a 210 go? Let me see. Yeah, yeah, so it's the admin of code, exactly. A, A, B, C, and then B, C, rest. Okay, low, let's say, is there like a scope error? Let's say print the list and it's some A plus B plus C. Now, 607, 608. Okay, so it's supposed to be 199, 200, 208. That's correct. Then it's 200, 208, 200 again. Uh, A, B, C, Kerr. I think there's like a scoping issue. No, let me see. A1, B1, C1. A. A1, B1, C1, B1, C1. One nine nine two hundred two hundred eight two hundred two hundred eight two hundred two hundred eight two hundred two hundred eight. So it's just a, uh, it's not updating the list correctly. So what is the D here? Hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's A, B, and C. Okay, let's actually not do it like this, right? It's A, comma, B, comma, C. Uh, okay, yeah, exactly. Sorry, sorry, now I'm, now I'm like sinking into the code and then it's a bit harder for me to answer answer okay the first sliding window is correct we have 
200 uh, 200, 109, 200, 208. Okay. And then we have D. Why is D here? Oh, okay. Right. So we shouldn't add them back. I think that's the problem. That we were adding them back. And we were doing it differently now. Yeah. Exactly. So now... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We fixed it. Uh, yeah, because I added them back and then it was kind of, it wasn't, it wasn't actually doing the thing. Okay, but now we get five for this. Okay, so let's uh, throw this out. Yeah. Haskell is a very, it's, so it's like a, yeah, it's a functional programming language, uh, which means that you always write functions. Um, and it's all about writing a function, right? So if you have a problem, you write a function, and then if you, if you want to fix it, uh, if you get another problem, you just write another function, right? And then you, it's all about kind of gluing all the functions together so that you, so uh, it becomes like a data transformation pipeline, right? So here, what this function does is that it transforms a list of ints into one int. And then like you kind of define this whole data flow pipeline where all your input data goes in and you know, it gets processed and you get the answer or the side effects that you want. Yeah, exactly. Janetin and me are the same it's also the it's the best program language that's my opinion but i am a qualified professional okay so it worked let's reload it without the thing and let's run it on our input it's always you always have to do it on the input same input actually so now we have the sliding window and no, then no change. Yeah. Five sums. Okay. Let's go. No, that can't be. Really? Oh, 1570. Okay, yeah. It's slightly different. Okay. Uh, I thought we were getting the same. Effort. Let's ch check it. Might be wrong, might be not. All right. We completed day one. It was pretty good. Yeah. We got a bit set back by the... Uh, we did it wrong in the start. But uh, it turned out okay. What's my favorite color? I think it is yellow. Look at this. Such a nice color, huh? Now orange is also good. So this is a good theme. A good combination. Okay, so yeah, let's go over what we did, right? First, we we're always just like kind of keeping track of the first one, uh, and then we were gonna switch to a sliding window, so we just switched to a sliding window. Um, and uh, because it's Haskell, right? We can just yeah, we can just pattern match on all the values, right? And then we just carry them with us everywhere, and then we construct a new list. So this is not the most optimal way, right? It will, it's going to, cause it like, it takes this list and then it has to construct this list and it's, it's an entirely new list, right? So this is like, not the best way to do it. Uh, and you also notice here that, uh, like this sum is equal to 
Yeah, so we really we really just have to check is if B is bigger than D, right? Let me check. Do we even need... Oh, okay, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we don't... We don't even need... Uh, I use take three with a tail recursion function in my implementation. Yeah. I mean, this is tail recursive, right? Count ink prime. It all works down. Uh, okay, but notice what we saw here, right? We don't actually need... We don't actually need B and C... In the... Uh, in the output. Yeah, so I think that's what Janet is trying to tell us, right? So... Instead of checking, like, if this one is bigger than... The next one, you're really just checking... Is this one bigger than this one, right? So like four steps ahead. Um, yeah. I don't know, let's uh, define a main. Compile it with O3. How fast it's gonna go. Save it, compile it, day one. Oh no. Let's see. Yeah. Oh. Uh, okay, so it takes 0. 0.2 seconds, which is not bad, yeah. Um, right, so if we had an array, right, we would... Uh, oh, <laughs> okay, that makes sense. Yeah, so, no. What is happening? I am sorry. This is all... Uh, big mistake. Okay. There we go. Okay, yeah, it doesn't take long, right? It takes... It, in fact... It takes... Shorter time to run our program than for bash to try and figure out if this is a command or not uh, that's not bad uh, so 20 point 20 21 milliseconds and I would like to point out that if we do like this and we, we don't even do our computation. Um, okay. So, like this, the boot up time is quite long. And then, in is read input. Input. Let's, let's just time it, right? How long? Oh, I'm on it. Now, I think this will actually be optimized away. 
or okay, let's actually print print the length of the input and no oh my god do okay print the length of the input that the word which takes us out it's no I keep like not reading what I'm running okay so that takes 10 real seconds whereas a uh, So we run it and yeah, so it takes us 24, yeah, 24 milliseconds. It's not bad. You can dump the core. Uh, how do I dump it again? Let's see. Now we're getting into advanced Haskell, right? Dump. Show generated core GC. A uh, D dump splices. Uh, core. D dump core stats. D dump DS. D dump DS. I think that's uh, D dump DS. Where, where does it dump it? It doesn't actually dump it. Watch me do advanced task. Exactly. Uh, why is it not dumping the core? Maybe I need to tell it where to dump it. D dump file dump. Dump to file. So let's see. D dump simple. D dump to file. Maybe it's going to some no. D dump file prefix equals dump. It's just it's just not dumping it. What if I do? What if I turn off O3? Oh now it actually did something. Yes. Okay. So this is the core. So what was happening is that uh, it was essentially not dumping it. Why? Well, it already compiled the file. So it's like, I don't need to compile it again. So now we get the actual thing. Okay. So the main is just a uh... yeah. So the example, yeah, okay, that's not interesting. Um, so this is our count inc prime function, right? And you can kind of say, see that okay, this is a very kind of primitive, right? But it it, it really just goes down into a case statement, and you can say that. It, it checks whether the uh, yeah I mean it, it really just defaults into like checking the uh, sorry it yeah it, it just checks it and then it calls itself again right Ooh. 
Well, let me see. What does this mean? Okay, so case curve mass. That's like, that was our current measurement. And so we kind of pattern match on the current measurement. And it's a. And it takes the Y82GQ, okay? And then it. Uh, what is the other case actually? Okay, there is no other case. Okay, so it, it, it just kind of unwraps the integer. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's what it's doing, right? Because it's an int, right? It's a wrapped int. So it has to unwrap the... It has to unbox the int. So that's what it's doing, right? So this is an unboxed int. And then we compare the unboxed int to... The... Uh, the one we had before. So this is the prev mes, right? And this is the... Uh, new mes, right? So it unboxes the int, and then it compares the two, and... I think this is false. So if it's false, then we just continue with res and sc2q. Otherwise, it does the same, but we add one to the sc2q, right? So you can see that the way we wrote it, I mean, it's, it's really just a loop with some case statements, right? Um, and there's no kind of fancy optimization. I mean, the only thing I can see we could have fixed here is probably we can use like unboxed integers because we know they are integers, so it doesn't really matter. Okay. But so, yeah, so this is what's called core, right? So what Haskell compiles into core and then core is compiled into... Uh, C minus minus, I think, and that's what we run, right? But this is kind of this is where my expertise ends. It's at core because you write you can write a core to code plugin to to change it. And you can see here, right? It it the actual like the previous measurement, it knows that it's always going to be an integer. So it actually comp optimizes it to be an unboxed integer, right? But what it can't know is that the current mes like the head of the list, right? It doesn't know that it's a list of unboxed integers. So it has to kind of make sure that it's an unboxed integer, right? Uh, but it doesn't have another... So yeah, it's basically saying, you know, if it's an unboxed then, like, and then I think there's a... I think it could have gone deeper into this, right? It probably could have said, Okay, there is no other case, right? It's always going to be an integer, so maybe we can turn this into a list of unboxed integers. But anyway, you can see that, like, this function here, right? With all our... No, it was not the one. It was this one, right? With all our where clauses and blah, 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 right? It, it's really... Dumped into... It's, it's really compiled into very... Very... Yeah, very, very small... Uh, core, right? So there's no funny business going on here. However, count ink two. No, this is count ink prime. Oh, right. Okay, this is count ink. Sorry. So we were looking at this code, which makes sense. Uh, yeah. Okay. So it calls. Okay. So it initially kind of does the initial loop kind of and then counting prime wait so this is counting counting prime and this is counting prime okay yeah so this 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 function here got lifted uh, no, wait. Okay, yeah, this was the original function. Ooh, but what is this? Hmm. No. So I wrote this code. Uh, but now we finished. We finished quite fast. So now we're kind of... We're digging into the code that, that was generated by the compiler to try and figure out... Yeah, like, could we have done something better? Um, okay, so this is counting, dollar counting, right? Okay, so it either... 
So this is one, this one is just calling itself. But what is this one? Where's, where do we refer? Okay. Yeah, okay. So it like generates a bunch of functions. And it kind of lifts it. And then they all become kind of, I don't know. I don't quite know what I'm doing. Uh, or looking at. But what I'm... So this is the actual counting. But you can see that all of them are kind of... So this one is... Okay, this is count ink. Okay, that one is invoked with the initial one. With the unboxed zero. Okay. And then... That is count ink. Okay, and then that one invokes... Oh, oh. Okay, alright. That one invokes the dot dollar w count ink prime, which is our our helper, which is defined here, the dollar dot count ink prime. But when is this one? Where is this one defined? So this one is in dot dollar count ink prime. Okay. So our global count ink. Yeah, there's probably something we can do about like code size here. So this one invokes this one, which invokes, yeah, I think this is like, oh wow, we are getting a raid, that's cool. Uh, so what we're doing now is that we wrote this code, right, and now we're looking at the compiler output because I write compilers, so <laughs> we're trying to figure out what's going on here. Because I, I mean, I, I, I write some of them, but I don't know what's going on. Here. So I think like some of these here are kind of the inlinings. I'm not entirely sure. So this one, this is the main one. It calls this one, and this one calls. And where is this one called? That is my question. Like, why is there one main dot count ink and another count ink? I don't like that. Um, okay, let's see. Read input, blah, blah, blah. Read input, read input. Uh, example. Yeah, and here we can see like a lot of the terms. And this is like the string and it's all kind of lifted. And this is fail because we have, in case we don't match the pattern. Well, here's accounting too. Yeah, and you can see that it kind of does the same, except it takes in three arguments, which are the like the three numbers. Yeah, uh, yeah. I have. I sometimes I work on GTC a bit. I have. Uh, if you've used type holes, you want to find something that's showable. Uh, no, wait, so that doesn't work. Anyway, you can say like, hey, I want to find everything that's Boolean scope. So this, this part is mine. Wow. But if you set F refinement level whole fits equals two, this is a cool part. It actually looks for things that given something returns a bool, right? So now you can find every function that takes in two things and returns a bool, which is like and and or stuff like that. Yeah, that, it's nice. The valid whole fits are nice, right? And if you write here, like you can say underscore and oh wait, I ha don't have Pascal language server, I think, do I? G H E up. Uh, no, yeah. So I have to install the language server. I don't think I have it here. Eh. So we have 8.10.6. Oh, and it's not HLS power. Okay, that is our problem. Why isn't it? Okay, let's install this one. 
Okay, let's just switch to nine. How about the type? I really like. So I added type holes because, or I didn't. I added that while it's whole fit suggestions. Let's be clear. Because uh, they enable you to do very cool type dependent autocomplete. Uh, but yeah, I'll show it next time. But uh, if you have it installed and then you have uh, Haskell. Language so okay, I have it installed. I think it's just because I I don't have the Haskell language server for the right version. Alright, I will install this one. And we'll see if it works, but uh yeah. Okay, uh, right, anyway, I think we covered this quite well, and, uh, yeah, I don't think we should dig too much into this, but you kind of see that it, it just compiles to, like, a loop, and it's always just calling itself, and then it's, like, it's all tail call recursive. So even if you're kind of pattern matching on a lot of, um... Uh, a lot of list things, then you can do that. Um, HLS power. Oh, okay. This one oh, should work. And then that's the one we want, right? Let's see. Okay, it's uh, unpacking. All right. Um, yeah. Like, there's a lot of output here, um, but like this is, I mean, this is like actual runnable code, right? You know, this is like, it's a case statement, right? So case, open file of like, if it exists, then you get the contents. Otherwise you, oh no, yeah, no, it's installing GNC. Okay. Uh, that might take a while, but I, yeah, read input isn't actually that useful. Uh, Uh, but I think what where did we have the counting to? Let's see. There. Uh, yeah. So you so you can see here. Let me let me grab this one and put it here. Okay. So this is counting to, and it's calling counting to prime, right? Okay. So counting to doesn't really do anything, right? It just it just calls the uh these are the these three right and then you have the uh but i think it's like the oh, what is it no this is okay this is not the counting function sorry this is counting two exactly so that one calls the list and then you know it it checks what is the list is it like does it have the first element and then we check the second does it have the second element and if it has the third element a b and c then we invoke count inc to count inc right which is this function which takes in these three right uh so it's in opposite order right so this is going to be the d rest right this one and then it has the A, B, and C. So it doesn't, it's, it's not like wrapped as a, it's not wrapped as a, uh, a list anymore, right? It's just, it, it compiles to like just a three argument function, right? Uh, so this is the A, B, and C. And then we check for the SC, SC3, 8 here. Case of, if it's empty, then we, then we fail. No, then we return this one, right? Um... Right, so if so, this this these two compile into one case statement, and if it's empty, then we just return the prime value, which is what we want. Otherwise, we check the a, and if that's a thing, and then if uh, oh yeah, and then we check with the d, and if that's a thing, then we 
kind of primitively compare the two. So this was the A and the, the D, and now, and they're called X and Y for for some reason, but okay. And if they are less, then we simply kind of keep going forward. So if they are, if if, if this returns false, and uh, this was cur right when we compiled, it. Uh, then we then we re then we just keep looping right with the cur. Otherwise, we keep looping with the other one. And uh, and you can see that these are just turn into new arguments, right? Okay, so that is nice. So here we're not actually passing it a list. It just turns into like calling it with the new arguments. That is quite nice, actually. So now, remember when I talked about, like, oh, it might be not good enough, but it actually, it actually seems to be quite good. Uh, let me see. Let's set this one. Okay, now let's quit. Now GC version. Okay, now we should be able to use Haskell language server. Let's open it up again. Now, where is our language server? Boop, 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 boop. This used to work. Uh, is my comment here. Uh, this extension has reported one uncaught error. Let's disable it and reload it. Right. This might take a few minutes actually. Do 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 do. Oh, and it forgot all my settings. Okay. Um. Let me see. Haskell language server again. I think I might have. Uh... Now it's enabled. And did it. No, it didn't complain. Aha! Now it actually works. Right. Uh, so we can. You know, it suggests redundant brackets. And you see this? It says underscore, and it's looking for an int. Right? And we can replace it with cur, and it lists all the other ints in scope, right? So it's like a superpower with type tools, right? Uh, because you can kind of, you know from the type what you can put there, right? And we're actually using this for code synthesis. So we can create entire programs by kind of recursively, you know, so we can like replace it with something like this, right? And then we can recursively replace this hole with something else. Now, it is a bit slow in 8.10, but we fixed that uh, in 9. Point, I think you have to have 9.2 actually. I patched it before 9, but it was a, it didn't make it in time. So, but then it's much faster. So, uh, anyway. So you, you you get a lot of nice things with these type tool completions, which is uh, which is nice, right? Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's in GHC itself. So if we look at, let's just look at it. GitLab. GHC. I never remember it. Look at GHC. Let's just look for me. Treat low. Damn it. Okay, I think I might have to sign in. And then we look at... Uh, yeah, there are some things that are a bit weird. Uh, this one, this merge request, two months ago. This is fresh off the press. 
Uh, so there was a bug just that was just a. It's slow, and now we fixed it. And it's a. Uh, it's not that complex. It was mostly so I added a new function that uh, allows you to do type checking, but it fails immediately. So yeah, run TCS as derives early abort, which is basically what it does is that it fails fast. So okay, this was like a another fit, or another fix, small fix to make it a slightly faster. But where do I actually? Yeah, run TCS derived early abort. So the thing is that you try and like find the things that fit, but you're doing it by invoking the type che checker, right? And what happens is that uh, the type checker will, like, if you f if it fails, like it can't solve the constraints, it will like really, really try to keep solving them to figure out like why, right? To generate good error messages. But when we're checking for whole fits, like we're not, we're not actually using the error as, at all, right? We're just, we just need to know, does it match or not? Like, I don't care why, just does, yeah. So I added this uh, early abort function to kind of make it, you know, as soon as you know that it won't work, just just quit, right? I don't need the error. So it makes it, it, makes it a lot faster. Uh, yeah, so, but that, I think, yeah, it was merged two months ago, and so it's available in 9.2, the fast one. I mean, it's it's not super slow. It's just, like, if you have, if you have a lot of stuff in scope and they are, like, hard to type check, then it was a bit slow, but now it's, uh, no, it's a lot faster. All right, I am going to call it a day for today. I'll see you, hopefully, tomorrow for some more... Advent of code in Haskell, but I think yeah, uh, maybe we probably won't dig into the dump again tomorrow. I was just you know because today was a bit short, right? But uh, yeah, so tune in again tomorrow, and probably I won't be on won't be on Friday. I think because I'm going to some Christmas market or something, but. There'll be a double feature on uh, Saturday. No, no, it's I, it's nice, right? It's I also like just talking about like why we do things and why we do it this way, and uh, yeah, and that's like the main main reason you're like why did we do it this way is because we can see that it just compiles to a loop, right, with the case statement. So I think it's a very nice way to do it. But uh, yeah, thanks uh, for today, and uh, yeah. Tune in tomorrow. Like, I, it's, it's nicer when we have a, a bit of a conversation going. All right. Bye.